some time ago, and it was um, possibly a year ago, I bought a couple of these um, 12 volt to USB power supply units because I wanted to charge my Google Nexus 7 to use as a sat nav. But the problem was it didn't charge very well. It charged very slowly um, and it didn't say charging on the screen. And I couldn't quite fathom out why. So I did a bit of digging and uh, found out that it was to do with the USB specification. Now, I probably wouldn't have made this video if it weren't for the fact that it appears that Maplin are still selling uh, the, what is it, A70LB. And this is the A70LB. I've punched a hole in where the screw is, but you can see that that's the model number. And they also uh, appear to be still selling the 2 amp version of the mini one as well, uh, N98J. Z. And in fact, if you look at the uh, reviews on this, it says, one of the reviews is, um, it's okay but let down by two things. It won't charge up Android phones. And I suspect that's because of the, exactly the same thing that I found. So I'm going to open them up and uh, have a look at what um, I found inside them and what the solution was. Now, if you look inside the uh, dual 12 volt and USB um, power unit, you've got these, uh, I'm going to use a magnifying glass for this because I need to get in quite close, but you've got these four resistors here and they appear to be slung between um, the 5 volts and the 0 volts and then they provide sort of mid voltages, uh, 2 volts and 2.8 volts I think it is on the data lines D plus and D minus and I thought well now what's all that about so let's take a quick look at Wikipedia now if you look at um, Wikipedia's USB article there's this section here which says before the battery charging specification was defined there was no standardized way for the portable device to inquire how much current was available um, for example Apple's iPod and iPhone chargers indicate the available current by voltages on the D minus and D plus lines. And then it says when um, D plus is 2.8 volts and D minus is 2 volts, the device may pull up to 2 amps of current. So it seems that Apple were using a non-standard way of indicating how powerful the uh, charging unit was. And it seems that a lot of these um, USB power units wanted to support Apple products and therefore included this potential divider network in the products but it doesn't work it seems on the more modern products it certainly doesn't work on the Nexus 7 and that guy who left the review saying it doesn't work on Android phones um, for the same reason presumably so what I wanted to do was find out the way to um, get around this now, also on the Wikipedia article, it talks here about dedicated charging ports um, without data support. A portable device can recognize the type of USB port from the way the D plus and D pins are connected. For example, on a dedicated charging port, the D plus and D minus pins are shorted. And so that made me think, OK, so say I cut out all this potential divider resistor business and just shorted these two pins together. Would that fix it? And so that's exactly what I did. You may just be able to see here um, that I've got a couple of cuts there. So I've cut away the resistor divider networks from the two data pins, which are these two middle pins here. And I've shorted across with just a blob of solder the D plus and the D minus. And that tells um, devices with a more modern specification that this is uh, a dedicated charging port that has the full 2 amps available. Now I think the spec actually has a limitation on 1.5 amps but the um, hardware can provide 2 amps and then the uh, unit that needs charging should draw 1.5 amps. And that did the trick. Um, it seemed to also support the Apple iPod so it didn't seem to affect the way my Apple device worked. 
but the uh, Google Nexus 7 then started to charge properly and actually indicated on the screen charging. And uh, on the, the smaller unit it was very tricky to do but you can probably just see there's the blob of solder uh, linking D plus and D minus together and the four resistors are actually these tiny black dots up here right up adjacent to the USB socket they're extremely small and it was a bit tricky finding where the connections went to cut them away from the D plus and the D minus sockets but that's what you have to do and then just put a blob of shoulder, solder and short across. Now the actual data for this came from the USB battery charging specification revision 1.2 dated December the 7th 2010 and it says for the dedicated charging port, the following requirements apply to a DCP. And in 4.4.3, it says detection signaling, a DCP dedicated charging port shall have an impedance between D plus and D minus of RDCP underscore dat. And there's RDCP underscore dat. It's the dedicated charging port resistance across D plus and minus. And it gives it as um, a maximum of 200 ohms and a minimum of, well, it doesn't show it, but of course it's zero. And um, I have seen articles that say stick a 200 ohm resistor there, but that's actually a misinterpretation. It's a maximum. It should be no more than 200 ohms. And of course, the easiest way to do it is to simply short D plus and D minus together with a blob of solder. And so with that modification made, both these devices are now able to charge... Uh, certainly the Google Nexus 7, but I suspect uh, other Android phones and devices, um, with the full amount of current, the full 1.5 amps that the unit will draw if it sees uh, a short circuit across D plus and D minus.